OpenAI just released the long-awaited GPT Store. Of course, when the GPT Builder was announced on OpenAI Dev Day, the store was announced with it, but it's taken us a long time to get to the actual release of the GPT Store. But why is that? Well, I think as we get into this launch, it will become very apparent as to why. Anyways, let's take a look at the blog post. It's pretty cool. Introducing the GPT Store. We're launching the GPT Store to help you find find useful and popular custom versions of chat GPT. I don't think the GPT store needs any explanation. We all know what this is going to be. It's been two months since we announced custom GPTs and users have already created over 3 million custom versions of chat GPT, which is pretty insane. Many builders have shared their GPTs for others to use, which we have done on stream, for example, with this channel, and it's been pretty awesome. But now everyone can go access and find random GPTs through this new GPT. GPT store that's only available through ChatGPT Plus. So still locked behind a paywall, which I don't really like that much. I'd love to see custom GPTs that can be built with GPT 3.5. I don't see why we shouldn't be able to do that. But team and enterprise users can also find popular GPTs as well. So it's not just for ChatGPT Plus. This is also for enterprise use as well, which is pretty interesting. Diverse range of GPTs are already available, not just by the community at large, which is us on obviously, but also their very specific partners. If you guys remember, the old GPT plugins actually got converted into GPTs on the GPT store, so I think that's a, a pretty simple evolution of the plugins, and it makes sense overall. But this has everyone worried, like, is the GPT store just going to be another fad that they kill out in a few months? Well, we don't really know, but I think it has a more solid chance to stand on its own legs than something like plugins, because anyone can develop with with it. I just hope that they add more features to, you know, make your GPTs a little bit more useful than they currently are. I mean, not to say that they're not useful at all, because they definitely have their parts, but they are limited in terms of what capabilities they can do right now, and we'll get into that. Anyways, much like the Apple App Store, we're going to get a new list of featured GPTs every week. To share your GPT in the store, you're going to have to obviously save your GPT after you build it, and then verify your builder profile with which just allows you to either enable your name or a verified website in your settings. Really simple to do. And then you set it to public. Oh yeah, and obviously if your GPT is violating something, it can just be taken right off the store. I haven't really seen any GPTs violating the store policies though. Now this is really awesome. Builders can actually earn money based on their personal GPT usage, so if you build a very popular GPT, you'll be able to earn some revenue from it, which actually makes sense because this is locked down only under those ChatGPT Plus subscriptions. So this will be launched in Q1, so somewhere between now and March, they will launch the GPT Builder Revenue Program. As a first step, United States builders will be paid based on user engagement with their GPTs, so how often? are people engaging with those GPTs? How many chats are they having? We'll provide details on the criteria for payments as we get closer, which means we haven't figured out a payment system, but we'll let you know. So team and enterprise customers also have the ability to manage GPTs as well. And I also noticed I haven't talked to you guys at all about the new chat GPT team plan. It's pretty simple, but this is, you know, a step down from the enterprise system. You know, if you're not like Google or Amazon or a big company like that, you can still use ChatGPT for your business. So I'd like to just briefly talk about this, actually. Basic rundown, ChatGPT for Teams, a customized, always improving super assistant for every member of your team in your little organization. Of course, all the typical benefits that you get with normal ChatGPT, but you actually get a dedicated workspace inside of ChatGPT for your entire team with admin controls, team management, and uh, very stringent security, which is very important. We never train on your data. That's why, you know, people aren't just using even the free version of ChatGPT for their businesses for the most part is they don't want their data being in the OpenAI training models. But as you can see, a lot of the examples they show off for teams is really based on that data analysis, which is really what's going to be useful for the majority of the smaller businesses that are actually using ChatGPT teams. Totally make sense. And then they also start to show off the store as well because that just got released. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and check out this store for ourselves. Now, I do want to make a quick note about access. I noticed when the announcement happened yesterday, I'm like, hey guys, I don't really have access to this new chat GPT store. 
what gives, and an OpenAI team member informed me that it was a slow rollout over about 24 hours, so in a few hours or so, all of you should have access, but if you check your chat GPT either on your phone or on the web and you don't have it, try relogging in and see if it pops up for you. Oh, and I almost forgot, guys, there is one more chat GPT feature that I'm actually really, really hyped about that I don't seem to have access to, but it seems to be another one of those slow rollouts over time. Andrew Karan here on Twitter just pointed out that personalization just went live. And as you can see, it says your GPT can now learn from your chats. First up, keep the conversation going. Your GPT will carry what it learns between chats, allowing it to provide more relevant responses over time. That is really cool to me. I would love for it to get to know me, learn my name, learn different things that I'm interested in, learn the knowledge that I already know so it doesn't have to ask questions that I don't need it to ask me when I'm trying to problem solve something, for example, which is what I use ChatGPT for quite a lot. We also have improves over time. As you chat, your GPT will become more helpful remembering the details and preferences that you have. So that's literally what I just mentioned, but I do want to make a point about preferences that's a really cool feature. I'll be able to say, GPT, uh, don't do that again. I don't want to hear you do that again. Kind of like building your own custom GPT over time. That's really interesting. And of course, you can also manage what it remembers. Your GPT can be designed to follow your specific instructions in chats. I mean, we kind of already have that. And what's nice is you can actually just wipe your GPT's memory. I don't know if you can actually see what it remembers. You can also just completely turn the feature off, which is what I imagine some people will end up doing because they don't like it. They think it's a little bit creepy. And honestly, I don't blame you. Andrew Karan points out it should be on by default, but just in case the toggle is over here in personalization, which I don't even have. We'll have to see how well this works and what it actually can remember and what it doesn't remember, and whether this turns out to be a hindrance in some cases, because I could see that as well. But either way, I'm super excited for something that's a little bit more personalized and can remember over time like a real virtual assistant. Okay, sorry for that little pit stop. Now let's dive into the brand new GPT store, which of course is the highlight of today's video. So the way you get to it is obviously you log into ChatGPT, then you go to Explore GPTs. Discover and create custom versions of ChatGPT that combine instructions, extra knowledge, and any combination of skills. So it's a very App Store-esque feeling vibe to this. First up, you have the trending GPTs. Well, first up, you actually have the featured ones. These are the curated top picks. As you can see, three out of the four of these are actually made by one of their partners, an actual company. So we got AllTrails.com, Khan Academy, and Consensus. And then this one book one is by Josh Brent. But yeah, then they actually have the trending one. So these are the GPTs that are the most popular. Of course, a lot of these are still from companies, but a few of them you can see are actually made by real people. And a familiar face here, logo creator by Chase Lean from Twitter, one of the best AI accounts to follow on Twitter. Definitely going to have to try this one out. But yeah, there's a plethora of GPTs. There's obviously all the open AI ones, but I honestly don't use those. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I don't think the open AI created chat GPTs are all that great. Right. <laughs> They've also got Dolly as its own category, of course, which has some really interesting uses. We've got Super Describe, Image Copy Machine, Gilbertree Art Designer by Gilbertree, another legend here from the AI community. This one generates both Dolly images and mid-journey commands. We have to try that out. Also, Image Caption Generator, another logo maker, photo, consistent character GPT. Of course, we also have Writing as an entire category in its own, SEO Optimized Blog Writer and Analyzer to help you with web traffic. That's really nice. We have a couple of these SEO optimized ones. Academic assistance, just a general tailored engaging content writer, essay writer, SEO Fox. It's insane, honestly, the uh, variety that you get right out of the box with this. And oh yeah, with posing that question that was from the beginning of the video, it's pretty obvious that the reason they waited so long to release GPTs is they wanted the community to get used to making GPTs and create a bunch of them to the point where the store actually has a nice fleshed out amount of GPTs to search from. Oh yeah, so these are all productivity, PDF, video generator. This is one that's literally a custom GPT finder, which is interesting. Canva, perfect prompt, convert anything GPT finder. I mean, it's just insane. We've also got research and analysis here. Find, evaluate, interpret, and visualize information. Also all programming stuff as well. You can see that companies are pretty good at building GPTs, but so are just your basic average everyday Joe. They know how to make them. Just awesome. I like that the barrier to entry for creating GPTs is so low. Education and lifestyle are the last categories here. You can see in lifestyle, immediately we have something called 
Riz GPT. Mm, a little strange there. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, obviously, you can go ahead and search for any GPT that you might be interested in, which I was doing, and they have quite a lot of very specific ones. As you can see, a simple search for something like Twitter, for example, brings up a bunch of different tweet-making AIs, hashtag generator. So whatever use case that you might be thinking of, well, there's almost certainly a GPT for that. All right, first up, we got to try Consensus. It's the number one trending GPT. It's also on the featured, so I feel obligated to try the most popular GPT as of right now. Search 200 million academic papers from consensus, get science-based answers, and draft content with accurate citations. Oh my god, this is gonna be insane for people in school. All right, I'm gonna start out with a question I genuinely have. What does academia say about the effects of ashwagandha? This is an herb, I believe, that a lot of people use in teas. It's supposed to be really good for you, so I wanna learn a little bit more about it. Okay, it's starting in action. It wants to talk to the chat consensus app. Do we allow this? Obviously, we're going to allow it, but we'll, we'll click always allow because that's how the consensus app works. Obviously, it's got to contact an API that they have set up. And those are the best GPTs, by the way, the ones that actually contact APIs. Academic research on the effects of ashwagandha reveals variety of potential benefits, including adaptogenic properties, improvements in muscle strength and recovery, stress and anxiety reduction, cognitive enhancement, and positive effects on overall health. Whoa, we have actual citations for all of this. What happens if we click on one of these? Oh my god, that is so cool <laughs> that is so darn cool and these are all you know split up individually here so for this specific effect for this specific effect oh my god this is just a cheat code for research papers kind of messed up honestly if you think about it let's try a, a legal question that might be a little bit more complicated for it if the trolley problem were posed in real life, would the law have to say about both choices? And I think you probably know what the trolley problem is, but just in case you don't know, here's an image of the trolley problem. Essentially, you have to decide between these two choices. It's pretty quick as, as well. It kind of just goes right to the API and grabs the information you need. I'm very impressed by this GPT. No wonder it's number one trending. In real life, such situations would involve intricate legal considerations related to negligence, duty of care, intention, and the principles of harm. Here's some insights from academic literature. The trolley problem has been applied to the context of programming autonomous vehicles. Moving beyond the thought experiment. Wow, this is crazy. We can actually get, like, real-sided paper information right off the... Oh, we had a network error. Yeah, everyone's been using GPTs lately, so we've been getting those classic fun chat GPT networks. I pay 20 bucks a month for this chat GPT. The servers should work. <laughs> All right, we got a response here. Letting a trolley run its course and unalive multiple people are actively intervening to change its course, resulting in fewer unalives, but directly causing harm intentionally by your own intention. Note from Autonomous Vehicle Ethics. We have a legal theory perspective from 1997. Pretty interesting. Moral conviction in social and political contexts. People's willingness to obey authority and the law can be influenced by their moral convictions. Else illustrated... My dilemmas. Okay, this is just like a general philosophical thing. In summary, if the trolley problem were actually posed in real life, the law would likely grapple with complex issues and moral permissibility, lesser evil defense, and the ethical justification of causing harm to prevent greater harm. Okay, well, let's say um, I want MLA citations for all of these. Does that just work? Oh my god, certainly. Here are all the MLA citations. Or is it going to put them in actual... Oh my god, I think it is going to put them in an actual alpha alphabetical order as well. Dude, <laughs> that is so awesome. I love it. Screw you, high school teachers. I never had to learn how to do citations. Chat GPT can just do them for me. Come on. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> now, can you do APA but for the entire conversation? Yeah, I'm writing a paper that also talks about Ashwagandha, not just the trolley problem, all right? This is quite a deep paper. If it wasn't already clear though guys, this is leagues above any search engine that is going to be integrated into an academic research website, your school's website, Britannica, any of those. This is so much better and it can do the citations for you as long as it doesn't have a chat GPT network error. Okay, let's explore more. Okay, let's try this video GPT. The easy way to generate stunning videos and grow your audience with AI. Um, let's create a video. Can you please tell me the theme or topic you have in mind for the video? My unhealthy obsession with lemons. Oh, that's a unique and intriguing topic. <laughs> it's like, 
like, whoa there, <laughs> what's going on? Tone and style, would you like the videos to be humorous, serious, or maybe surreal? Ooh, content elements. This is very similar to uh, in video AI. Someone constantly thinking about lemons, scenes showing different lemon related items. This is going to be satirical humor. Someone constantly thinking about lemons. The conclusion is to think about watermelons. Target audience is British people. Where are all those British Matt VidPro viewers at? This one's for you. Okay, now it's generating a concept for the video. Title, when life gives you lemons, think watermelons. A satirical and humorous take on individuals' exaggerated obsession with lemons. Comedic scenes showcasing the person in various everyday situations, at home, work, shopping, thoughts humorously overtaken by lemons. The twist comes at the end where the moment of epiphany leads the character to switch their obsession to watermelons, suggesting a lighter, less sour outlook. Visually vibrant with quirky British humor essence. Witty dialogues and exaggerated expressions. Aimed at a British audience, this video will use subtle cultural references and humor that resonate with them. If this aligns with your vision, say continue. Continue. Okay, now it's connecting to the vid.io uh, API, I assume, and it's generating this video. I don't know how long this is going to take, I assume. Oh, it needs to uh, talk to the website. Yes, you can all, You can do that. There are quite a lot more capabilities that are opened up inside of ChatGPT brought on by the store, and I think people kind of dissing the store are missing that. It's a pretty big deal, more than you might think on the surface. Hopefully, you guys will be able to see that based on the demonstrations I'm giving you by the end of the video. Okay. Okay, so it actually generated us a video, and we have a link now where we apparently can go watch this. I did not think I was going to be listening to any audio today, but let's put the headphones on. Okay, here we are on this random website. So picture this. I'm at work, minding my own business, when suddenly, bam. Lemons. Lemons everywhere. I can't escape them. They're in my thoughts, my dreams, even my coworkers have lemon-shaped heads. It's like a lemon invasion. But you know what? Life's too short to be fixated on lemons, so I had a revelation. Watermelons. Yes, watermelons. They're big, they're juicy, and they're the symbol of a lighter perspective. So from now on, it's all about watermelons. No more lemon-induced madness. Because when life gives you lemons, think watermelons. It's time for a whimsical perspective change. Cheers. Yeah, my honest feedback on that is that is not anywhere near as good as InVideo AI, which does a very similar thing, but creates better scripts, in my opinion, better voiceover, and of course uses better stock footage. Hey, at least this is a little bit more free than InVideo AI is. So far, we've done full academic research that is absolutely useful and done a fun little video generator that at the very least is both free and entertaining. Okay, at this point, guys, I am hellbent on trying something that is made by a community member. Let's try one of the dogs. All E ones. Ooh, the Gilbert Tree art designer. I really like that one. A while ago, I actually did a collab with Gilbert Tree. I appeared in one of his videos as a judger of some different AI. Gilbert Tree does great stuff. Turn any idea into four unique and beautiful variations by generating both Dolly images and Mid Journey commands. Let's do image that looks like a live action cinema movie screen shot. I want a fruit and vegetable in battle with each other. They can have human features, but I want them to look real. Show me the money, Gilba Tree. Show me the money. Okay, so first we're getting the mid-journey prompts that we can literally just copy and paste. That's pretty awesome. We'll, of course, test these out in actual mid-journey. I'll go pull that up right now. Oh, wow. So it's literally generating more than one image right inside of one prompt. Something that I did not think was possible with ChatGPT. Because if you guys know anything about generating Dolly 3 in regular ChatGPT is that it won't allow more than one image at a time, but this is absolutely doing more than one at a time. And I gotta say, so far, the images are pretty epic. We've got a live apple fighting a carrot here. Actually, a really, really nice generation overall from Dolly 3. I'll be excited to see what Mid Journey V6 produces. Oh, I love the castle in the background. Okay, this is pretty awesome, man. This thing knows how to prompt. This is so much better than your basic regular Dolly. Gilbert Tree, you know what you're doing. Okay, let's copy the Mid Journey prompt. 
error generating. Uh, at least we got three images. Again, the servers have been swamped lately, so. Oh, it definitely knows how to do a good mid-journey generation as well. I think the mid-journey V6 generations here are a little less coherent than Dolly 3 overall, but still look really nice and honestly look a little bit more like a cinematic movie. But still though, I actually really like the details on these. Good prompt designing Gilba Tree, or should I say Gilba Tree's GPT. All right, here's the mid-journey potato and strawberry one. These all came out pretty awesome as well. Again, a little bit less coherent than you're getting from Dolly 3, obviously. You know, this is just like the castle in the background. It's a nicer presentation overall, but I do like some of the details in these mid-journey images. And the same kind of goes for this last one over here where we got the banana. What is that, an arugula he's fighting? Oh, we missed our, our grape one. This is the one that uh, failed to generate. Let's have mid-journey do this one. Now, this one's downright creepy though from Dolly 3. I think we can all agree on that. Okay, grape versus broccoli did not work out too well. Again, showing the coherence difference between Midjourney and Dolly, but uh, yeah, this thing does look like it's ready to take a life at the very least. Either way, awesome stuff. Obviously, there are literally millions of more GPTs we could take a look at, although right now I'm going to show you guys some that I experimented with last night that I really enjoyed. Super Describe, which allows you to upload any image you want, and it tries to recreate that image with Dolly 3, and honestly, it does a shockingly good job, like a shockingly accurate job at replicating images. This is the one, obviously, I uploaded. This used to be a Dolly 3 generation, by the way. One of the best I've seen, mind you. This generation is fantastic, but it replicated it fairly identically. Like, this is pretty sweet. And then I said, just do another. And it also did another one that's also pretty accurate. It's kind of crazy how close it was able to get with both of these images. I also uploaded another little image that I generated with Dolly 3, and it did a pretty decent job at replicating that one as well. However, I want to try it with something from real life. Let's try a photo of my dog. Ooh, okay, this one was a little bit more difficult for it. Uh, kind of the same concept, but the angle are entirely different. Let's try a lovely photo of me. I'm sorry, but I can't assist you with that request. Open AI, when will you learn? Okay, so I also tried Humanizer Pro, which is supposed to be a writing GPT that passes all of those AI writing detectors and writes very human-like. So I had it write a long, passionate argument for why we should grow trees across the country, and it actually wrote quite a bit of text, which I really like to see. Definitely looks a little bit different than your typical chat GPT essay, but not that different, mind you. I'd like to see something that can kind of figure out and write in your own personal style, but uh, let's go try this in one of those GPT detectors. By the way, you shouldn't trust any of these AI detectors because it's really, really difficult to actually tell whether or not an AI wrote something for the most part, especially if someone's good at using a GPT. Chances the entire text is AI is only 36%, so that's pretty good, I guess. The classification that they think on their training data is that this is a mix of AI and human. What if I just add like a bunch of characters at the end and then scan it? Oh, now it's only a 5% chance that the entire text is AI. Like I said, I don't think that these detectors are all that great. And even they know that this result should not be used to directly punish students. But I think Humanizer Pro probably did a pretty great job here. Oh, and finally, this was a GPT that I had a ton of fun messing around with last night. This is the Photography Mentor GPT. I actually found this while just searching for GPTs with the search function, and you can actually send it the different photos that you might have taken, and it will look at the different photos that you took and give you an evaluation based on composition, creativity, the technique, the light, the harmony between the colors, composition, and the style, and I think that's really, really cool and really unique for photographers. I did notice that you could upload a pretty horrible photo to it and it'll be like, hey, this photo is like uh, a 7 out of 10, when most certainly it isn't. But either way, it was really fun to get immediate feedback on some photos that I have taken in the past. So overall, really, really cool little GPT and a nice idea for one. Oh, it also goes ahead and will caption them as well. Like this picture taken in Antelope Canyon was titled Luminous Descent by the Photography Mentor GPT. By the way, guys, right next to me, they have this global view. Now, you can turn this on and off. I assume this locks it by region? And of course, then you have your own created GPTs and then create a new one. Uh, they haven't really changed the GPT creator at all yet. I would love to see an update to this in the future. I think it's decent, but it definitely needs some work. Obviously, guys, when you already create a GPT, if you want to make it public, that will be in the save tab over here and you can see publish to everyone. What's pretty cool is you can select from all the different categories and just put your GPT in any category you want. And by the way, you won't be able to publicly upload them unless you do set up that builder profile as we discussed in the beginning 
beginning of the video. So here in settings under builder profile, this is where you're going to want to enable your name or a website. And that's how you'll be able to actually upload your GPT to the public domain. Oh yeah, by the way, this name comes directly from your billing details, so you can change it to pretty much anything you want. Overall, guys, I am extremely excited for this GPT store. I'm definitely going to be using a lot of these GPTs to complete various tasks throughout my day-to-day -day life. There's a lot of tasks that I specifically use GPTs for. We have math, book summary, language coach, like the list goes on, right? The most common complaint that I've seen about custom GPTs so far leading up to the announcement of this store was that, well, a lot of the stuff that I've seen custom GPTs do, I can simply just ask ChatGPT and it'll do it good enough. Well, I think that a lot of these popular GPTs that we're seeing spring up, while well, this actually isn't the case, take the research one, for example, you're not going to be able to cite actual resources like that through normal chat GPT. You need a GPT for that. Even Gilbertry's image creator, for example, like it will take you quite a lot of effort to prompt chat GPT in the correct way to both produce a mid journey image and also produce a Dolly three image. That's good. I think that goes for most of the GPTs that I've seen that are popular right now. Truthfully, guys, the best part about this is that it's very easy to make a GPT. Anyone can build a GPT as you saw some of the most popular ones weren't even from an actual website or corporation. They were just from community members. That is so important because this is putting power back into the people when you really think about it. This is the democratization of creativity and good ideas being able to be brought to life with advanced AI technology. Let's say you had a really good idea for an app, for example, that really helps people out, but you have no idea how to code. You don't know how to make an iOS app and yet it's a lengthy process to actually upload an app to the app store. You can do a GPT that can do a lot of things apps can do in a mere matter of, I don't know, 30 minutes, an hour, and then upload it to the store. And if it's a popular GPT, that's actually a good creative idea. Even if you don't know how to code it, you can actually make revenue starting in quarter one of 2024. I think it's pretty awesome. I wish uh, the GPT store the best for the time being. I'd also love to see it expanded, of course, to the free users as well. That's a big thing for me. And I'd love to see a little bit more in-depth uh, GPT creation right now. It's pretty good for a start, but I would definitely like to see some updates made to the creator itself. Remember to share your GPTs down in the comments below, as well as share your custom GPTs in my Discord server that is linked in the description. Like I said, this is going to be a pretty huge week for AI and already has been. There's a lot of stuff I still want to talk about. So if there's any specific AI topic that you want me to talk about or mention in a video, please let me know as well. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.